Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Dawn. With this being the beginning of 2023, I thought it would be the perfect time to go over some tips that we can do that are, are really simple things and anybody can do them no matter where your living situation is, what you have going on. Uh, I'm going to go over what this crazy looking thing is and um, just give some ideas for things that we can control. There's a lot right now going on that is concerning that we have no control over and we see prices rising, we see things going on and uh, even if we're going to be trying to garden and do things to maybe be more self-sufficient, those things are of course costing more with inflation and, and that. But these are some things that we can all do that we do have some control over. Now the first one is track your spending for one month or three months. And don't let me lose you here. It is not difficult. I was so surprised when I actually wrote down everything that we did just as we did it. Now I did use a spreadsheet and if you know my channel, you know, I am old school and I like to write things out and have things hard copy. Uh, but there's of course, Excel and Google Docs and there's just all kinds of good spreadsheets that you can use. So whatever kind of thing would work for you, that might be the best way to go because it makes it very easy to put things in categories like these are my groceries and then I went to this store and I did this on this day and I spent that much money. And especially if you go somewhere like those super stores that have food and other products, it makes it really easy if you want to separate those out. Some people like to say that's all one category. Whatever I get at that store, that's all one category for me. But the reason that I start off with that is because this is one of the areas that we can all see exactly where our money is going. So what did we spend it on? At the end of the month, it is really hard to look back if you have not written it down and you haven't kept track and think of every dollar or euro or lorry or whatever that you have, have spent, where did that go? And what was it for? And when did you spend it? And it also helps you see trends. So maybe there is something that you are spending money on you didn't even realize because you're busy and you have stopped at the restaurants a whole lot more than maybe um, you wanted to. Now, one thing I would suggest, even though I do believe a spreadsheet is really easy, I would take something like a little notepad in your purse or whatever you keep your book bag. I got this one at the Goodwill for under $2 and just write them down as you go or have some type of system. Another way you could put your, uh, all your receipts, if you get the paper receipts, you could put them all in an envelope or if you like email receipts, you can have a folder in your email, whatever works for you. But I would do that because sometimes life does get busy and it gets in the way. And you may have went 10 different places and spent money in a day, but you don't get to put that in your spreadsheet for three days. And that's going to be hard to remember too. So that is one that I think if you do that, you will be surprised at the areas you find that you can cut back and not even really feel it that much in your budget and, and in your lifestyle. Now, along that same line, menu planning would be the second tip that I would say. And it doesn't have to be something elaborate. It doesn't have to be something that takes you hours all the time. But the reason that I would say to do that is I think all of us, everyone that I know, you get something at the store and you're going to cook it and then you don't and the celery sits in there for days and days and it goes bad and you have to throw it away. Or you saw some recipe online or on a YouTube video or what, and it looks amazing and you're going to do it and you go get all the ingredients for it, but then life gets in the way and you don't do it and all those ingredients just get wasted. And that is money that we can have back. We can have control over that. So that is absolutely one to help you avoid that waste and know what's in there. And then the next week you can even look in your pantry, in your refrigerator and say, what do I have that maybe I was going to use and I didn't. And you can plan that into the next menu item and use it up. And so it doesn't get wasted. And of course that's helpful. And along those same lines, tip number three, would be reusable items you can do right in your home. And this is for anybody. And yes, of course, there is a little bit of an upfront cost, 
But once you do that, then you can reuse these things over and over and over again. And you just had that one cost. So not only is that a savings that you can control, regardless of what happens with inflation and, you know, rising prices and shortages, and maybe you go to the store and what you need isn't there. Well, it's all right because you've already got things at home that you can use. And the kind of things I'm talking about, like here, I have a reusable napkin. And you'll notice because we live in a cabin in Colorado, I have this pattern here. It goes very well with our house. But this is a cloth napkin. It can be uh, reused. It can be um, washed. And you can, some people would reuse them over and over. I make sure that I have enough so that I can use one with each meal. And then uh, whenever I do my laundry, whatever that schedule is, I won't run out of napkins before that. So I keep uh, something like this on my table with all the folded napkins in there. And then we just use them and use them. And uh, when it's laundry day, I wash them up and, and fold them up and put them back in there. So we don't have to worry if there's paper products at the store that I can get or how much they might be going up because we have these and it's nothing you have to throw away either so that makes it nice another thing you can get to use at home is reusable containers like these are mason jars that you can get in pretty much any store that has canning supplies and things like that they're really nice because they're solid again you can wash them over and over and over again so this one has honey in it and then you can even get the bigger containers uh, that are a savings depending. Sometimes the, the bigger sales aren't. I'm sure everybody knows that. You have to watch that. But you can get bigger containers of honey or maple syrup or whatever and then put them in things like that. Another huge savings that you can get that you can absolutely control is doing something like if you're a tea drinker or an iced coffee drinker, you can make your tea ahead of time and then, <coughs> excuse me, put it in the refrigerator and have that all week long and actually I think I'll take a drink of my tea and then you don't have to stop at, on your way to work because you're tired and you're sleepy it's just already ready for you so you won't even be tempted to go to the coffee shops and you can use a coffee shop for a treat with a friend or something instead of a daily expense that can be a huge savings that you have control over another way to do that um, these are uh, dehydrated blueberries so you can keep those in those containers or instead of using uh, Ziploc bags and, and those kind of throwaway bags, you can use these kind of, uh, this is Pyrex, so it's glass with a, a lid. It's so great because you can use it in the microwave, you can put it in the refrigerator, they even go in the freezer. And again, they're reusable, they're washable, these are dehydrated bananas. Um, so that's another thing that you can do to help you control the cost and be in control of a couple things. Along that same line, uh, I've done a video on um, homemade cl uh, drain cleaner. You can look up all kinds of recipes for homemade cleaners that are really, really inexpensive. You can do the drain cleaners like the video that I did. You can do glass cleaners. I found uh, recipes for homemade eyeglass cleaner, a really simple, inexpensive ingredients. And you, you get that all made up and you put it in a, a squirt bottle that you get for a few cents at a store and then you have your own glass cleaner and you don't have to have those expensive wipes and things like that. So those are things to research and look. Find recipes that you would be comfortable with using that you feel are safe for you and your family and try them out and see one and I think you'll be surprised how well they do work and how much you can save with that. Now talking about all of this it kind of brings up the point of feeling a little bit like where do we do and how do we get through this year and oh my goodness I can't believe that went up again and I want to share the scriptures that as if you know my channel you know I share scriptures every time to give us some hope and to give us some uh, encouragement in the Lord to remember that he's there and the first one I'm going to share is out of Proverbs and I'll just say that Proverbs has so much wisdom in it and it's certainly things that our grandparents would have known and used uh, but we've kind of lost a lot of it and there's 31 of them 
So that might be a perfect thing for you to do this year is just say, you know what, I'm going to read one proverb a day. They're not that long. They're, they're pretty short. And it's, it's okay because if you miss one, you don't have to feel guilty. Oh gosh, now I'm up. Just go to the next day. And then the next month you'll get that one. And by the end of the year, you would have read them over and over and they have so much wisdom in them. So this one here is Proverbs 3, uh, verse 1. My son, don't forget my teaching. Keep my commands in your heart, for they will add to you many days, years of life and peace. And that's certainly something that uh, would be wonderful for all of us. And then this one, you will get to know that Philippians is one of my favorite, favorite books in the Bible. It has helped me so much throughout my life. And this verse here, Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And as always, I have links down below to learn more about Jesus and the peace you can find in him and the promises that are available to you through him. So um, definitely, definitely look at that if that is something of interest to you. So the fourth one, the fourth item that I would say that we could do, any of us that we have control over, that we can control, um, we just found out in Colorado that the only gas refinery here has now shut down until at least the end of March. So our gas prices apparently are going to go way high. Um, I can't control that. I can't do anything about that. But these things I'm telling you about today, you can control. You can do these things and you can help that not cost as much for your family. And one of those would be timers for your lights. We have up here uh, in the mountains uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. is what they call premium time, I think. So our electricity costs more from 4 to 8. So you could put timers on if you have that kind of thing where even if you're not home, any lights that are on would go off at 4 o'clock. And that way you don't run the dishwasher during that time. You don't run your washer and dryer during that time. You plan those things so that if you have that premium time, you try not to use it any more than you have to. Or even if you don't have that premium time, uh, you know, you save up, you don't do the two pieces of laundry, you, you make sure that you're doing more together so that you, you use less water, yet less electricity, things like that, that will really help you. Unplug things that aren't used. You know, we've heard that for years. I have heard that since growing up, that they just drain things sitting there plugged into the wall. And uh, do you really need that plugged in? Do you need that every day to be running all day long? What about your coffee pots? Can you unplug that? Could you take a couple extra minutes and reprogram it in the morning? Or maybe you don't have the time to do that. Just look at those kind of things and see what you can do. You can have fun with it. Um, I have older children that will stop by and, and come in and things and and they'll leave every light on in the house and I, and I just go behind them switching off the lights. Well, if you have people in your home that forget to turn off the lights, make a game of it even if you have smaller kids and you know every time a, a light is left on and somebody else catches them, they get paid a nickel or a quarter or whatever and um, then they get to go spend that and that could be something fun to do and make it so that it's not just a chore but it's something that will help you save money, but it doesn't have to take away from your happiness or your joy and just sit at home in the dark, um, not enjoying yourself. And then the fifth tip is why this is sitting here. I'm going to be making a video um, on some ways that we can save that are actually things that I saw growing up in Illinois. Uh, I grew up near the Amish community in Arthur, Illinois and places like that. And um, a lot of things that they do, we could do if we wanted to. Now this one here is a Amish made clothing dryer actually that I use. And um, I'll go over that on the video on Wednesday. I'm going to do uh, three different Amish things uh, that you can save money on and I'll demonstrate how to use these. But definitely hanging your clothes to dry. Even if you use a regular machine washer, you can hang your clothes up to dry. When we lived in the country of Georgia, uh, 
the Airbnbs would say they had a dryer, but I quickly learned the dryer they're talking about was a wire rack. They sold them in the stores, they were all the same, and you hung your clothes on that. Whether it was inside, like I do use this inside right now because it is cold and snowy out there in the mountains, but uh, whether you do that inside or you would do it outside, everybody used that. I don't know that I ever saw a commercial dryer unless it was made specifically maybe in the hotels or something, but um, everybody did that. You walked along the streets and you saw clothes hanging out on all the balconies and it was just, even when it was cooler, they did that. I haven't tried that yet. So uh, if you have, put a comment down. If you dry your clothes outside when it's cooler, does it work? Um, I would think it would take longer, but anyway, this does not take up much space and I'll show that in the video that I'm making, but you can do this even in an apartment, um, no matter how big your house is, you can make a space for this. And of course it doesn't stay up. That's the wonderful thing too. It's very portable. And so you're not having this thing in the middle of your living room uh, for days on end. You just put it on there, your clothes dry and you take it down and you didn't have the expense of a dryer. And you can go further with that. And this is another thing I'm gonna demonstrate on that video. This here is a handmade plunger washer. And I'll show you how it works. It is super simple. It's not difficult at all. You can use that with a tub in your bathtub or shower area. You don't have to have a special area to do that. You don't have to have some big homestead to do it. I do it right here in our little 700 square foot cabin and I do it inside, and then you're not even using the electricity uh, that you would use for the commercial washer either. So that would be an option to help you save money. So I hope that you will tune in on Wednesday to see those Amish tips, and uh, there's a fun bonus too that is gonna be on there, just a, a tasty thing I wanna share with you that I enjoyed certainly from the Amish. Uh, but if you're liking these videos, please do subscribe. We have a lot of people around the world, it really surprises me, that watch these videos that are not subscribed. And it certainly would help the channel if you would subscribe to that. So please consider doing that today. Uh, subscribe and then hit the bell so that you can get notified when we have new videos. And um, certainly like this video if you are enjoyed the content. If you have any tips that people might benefit from, ways that we can control, ways that we can save money, that we may not even have thought of, please put the comments down there. People would enjoy seeing that and it certainly could help all of us to stretch our money as much as possible in these days in 2023. So happy new year to everyone. I hope your new year is off to a great start. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.